welcome to the Cops in the Box series of films. These short episodes will take you through every stage of the process of setting up a tree nursery, growing and planting your trees, and all the tools and techniques you'll use along the way. In this first episode, we're looking at the big picture, woodland design. How to decide which trees to plant and where. The right trees in the right places is a more trees motto, and you're about to find out how to get it right. The first stage in woodland design is at a computer. There's a lot of information you can get from the computer and from the internet to understand the best way to go about creating your woodland. What I do is I go to a number of different websites to get that information. The first is Google Maps and I always go there so I can get a better understanding of the location in its surroundings. You know, where the local towns are or villages and so forth. Now very, very rapidly what I can see here is there are a number of fields which are surrounded by trees and also there's some continuous woodland coming through the site. I also like to go to OS Maps and I can see in this area there are no public rights of way and again that's very important because I would not wish to be planting trees across a public right-of-way. I then look at a DEFRA application called Magic Maps and it has a lot of information. Now at the moment what you can see is a mass of colour and there are many layers within this that can be turned on and turned off because a lot of it you will not need to use and it's worth just clicking through these and seeing if something is going to appear and then you can investigate again. Now within this, I can see we've got woodland around the area, and this tells me that they're priority habitats, which is very positive because we would be planting trees that will connect up those woodlands. There are other websites as well which will give you information about particular species. The Devon Biodiversity Records Centre holds a lot of this information and you can do a request for information. The National Biodiversity Network is another key site to visit. So that very quickly gives you an understanding of looking over your site and what I am about to approach when I go on a site visit. So the landowner has asked us to plant some woodland and what we're going to do is go and have a walk around and look at some of the things we need to be considering. So this is very typical of a woodland visit. First time you see it, you never know actually what you're going to find, um, even if you've done your desktop work. So you can see this is very overgrown, got mature trees. Access is definitely challenging. And um, as I walk out into this field, I can see that the, presently there's a lot of bracken, a lot of tall bracken thistle and bramble and this site will definitely need to be topped and that means the, the cut right down in about September, early October, which then makes it a lot easier for us to come in and plant. So there's a number of things I'm immediately noticing here. You've got a lot of natural regeneration, which is great to see and something we, um, we really do promote. We are bringing in native British trees uh, into the site, but we will plant in some areas more densely than others. And here where you've got good natural regeneration, we would definitely plant with less density. And down into the valley bottom, we want to be planting down there. We know the ground is much softer, it's much wetter. So we'll be looking for species that like that. So species like the alder, aspen and the willow. 
The main consideration in this field is the overhead power lines. We cannot plant underneath those because in 20 years time the trees will be going through them and causing a problem. So we do plant but we stay five meters each side of the lines and that leaves a nice corridor through the middle for the grassland and the species that enjoy that space. In this field we need to think about the boundaries and the mature trees. We don't want to be planting under mature trees like this majestic oak. The trees that we would plant simply wouldn't grow or grow very well. The other thing we need to think about is we have gates so we must ensure we don't plant all the way across this field so a vehicle can at some point enter the field. When designing a woodland, it's really important to think about what's already here. And if you can, it's sensible to do some baseline surveys. That means that you could survey the trees, the banks, ditches, and considering all the plants and species that grow within those areas. And then you can see how things will change over time. But not only that, you could also identify things that you really want to keep. So it may tell you where not to plant trees. And that is exceptionally important too. Overall, it's about having the right trees in the right places. After you've visited your planting site and worked out which trees are right for which areas, you'll need to draw up a plan of the site and calculate the number of trees you'll need and cost, and check for any restrictions in your planting area. I'm now going to use the Magic Map applications which I spoke about earlier to physically draw on the areas that I would like to plant. And once we have those polygons and those shapes, we can query it on here and it will tell us the area. And then from that area, we can work out the number of trees. And working out the number of trees, we have to think about planting density. Does the landowner want the area to be grazed in future? Or is the landowner interested in having a very dense closed canopy woodland? And with them being broadleaf, we will plant about 1,100 trees per hectare. So it's very easy then to see how we can work out the number of trees required once we've drawn these polygons. And there's a little button on here which tells us we can measure area or distance. And this was one of the fields that we saw. What I can do as well is I can bring up an aerial map Very quickly, I can create a polygon. And then this information up here will tell me the area. And that tells me that that area I've just drawn is 0.4 hectares. But we also know there are power lines running through the field here. So I want to make sure that I leave a gap through the middle. So you could measure with a ruler. So there we have about 10 meters. So I know to leave a gap approximately like that all the way along. And it happens that this is also 0.4 hectares. So we know in this area, we've got 0.8 hectares. And a very simple calculation now on an Excel spreadsheet got 0.8 hectares times 1100. I know in that field we need to take 880 trees with us. Now that we've put all the information which we gathered today on the site onto the computer, we know the size of the areas, how many trees we wish to plant and we can now put that plan into action. So you've got a plan for how your woodland will be structured with the right trees in the right places. The next stage is to prepare your nursery space, whether that be gardens and windowsills or a dedicated space. We'll take you through that in episode two.